Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton or WACA TV in Ashland. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan on camera as Ashland Post 77 set to take on North Chelmsford Post 313. As we are ready to get underway, Sean Babino delivers the first pitch of the game for strike one. And we are underway. Ashland Legion is 10 and 5 on the regular season. And North Chelmsford right behind them with a record of 9 and 6. Wind up and the pitch. That one is just outside. A 2 and 1 count. On the leadoff hitter, John Barry, the second baseman. And he is going to end up drawing the walk. So that'll put a runner on. No outs to start things off and bring a Pete Miller, the third baseman. We'll take a look at the standings in just a moment. Waltham and Ashland at the top of the standings. 10 and 5 records overall. Newton 9 and 5. Sudbury 8 and 5. That one is just low. North Chelmsford 9 and 6, a game out of first place. Natick 9 and 6, Lowell 8 and 6, Medford 7 and 7, Hudson 2 and 11, Bill Ricca 1 and 17. They have forfeited their season. So it is quite a group of teams towards the top and several teams still alive in the playoff picture. Of course, four teams go to the postseason. Runner leading off first, the throw over. And they pick him off. There's out number one, Sean Babineau, showing off that dangerous pickoff move. And there is one out in the inning. As the hitter set to step back in, Pete Miller. And that is a nice way to start things off for post 77. You struggle a little bit giving up the walk, but now you get the pickoff. Is that one inside for a ball? Wind up and the pitch on the two and two. Right back to the pitcher it goes. Babineau picks it up, throw to first, and not in time. The ball also gets away from the first baseman, Pesson. So that allows the hitter to reach. And that will bring up the third hitter in the lineup, Andrew Fisher, the first baseman. So there is one on, one out. Fisher to step in. Runner leading off of first. Babineau delivers. That one is low, 1-0. Runner leading off once again. Babineau, a dangerous pitcher to test as far as his pickoff move, as this one is a fair ball. Takes a hop on the infield grass, handled by Pesson, and it's a three unassisted ground out. Runner from first does advance to second, but there is two outs. And that will bring up Max Silverman, the catcher, and the cleanup hitter. North Chelmsford led by head coach Colin Claney, or excuse me, Colin Clancy. They're writing a bit faded out on the lineup card, but it is Colin Clancy doing a nice job with this North Chelmsford program. And this post-313 is a program that has really built up over the last few years. And they are one of the most competitive programs in Zone 5 this year. Babineau set to deliver. There's a strike on the catcher, Silverman. Two outs in the top of the first. Runner on second. Babineau looks over at second and deals. Fouled away. Coach Clancy giving some signals over to the runner at second. 
A big game here for North Chelmsford as they are one game out of first place. That one's filed away. And this is the last week of the regular season, so big games really for all the teams that are still alive. Only two teams out of it. And several still alive as far as reaching the playoffs. Babineau set to deal. And this is fouled away. A good battle going on here between the cleanup hitter, Max Silverman and Sean Babineau. Silverman steps back in. Wind up in the pitch. A called strike, and that is going to do it for the top half of the first. Silverman didn't like that call, but that's the way it'll end. A scoreless game as we head to the bottom of the first. It is Ashland Allegiant Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton or WACA TV in Ashland. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan on camera. Bottom of the first inning, scoreless game, and the first pitch to an Ashland hitter is fouled away. Jake Obit at the plate, the left fielder. We'll get you the lineup in just a moment. Ashland 10 and 5 on this season. As that pitch outside. One and one on Obit. Is Jake Obit leading things off playing left field as he takes another ball there. Ronan Bates at second base batting second. Jackson Horning the shortstop batting third. Ben Thomas the right fielder in the cleanup spot. Zach Pesson the first baseman batting fifth. As that one is low by the pitcher James McNamara. Lewis Rossi playing third base batting sixth. Tom Otzi batting seventh. The DH Sean Jewett the catcher batting Eighth and batting ninth is Brad Seymour, the center fielder, as this one's hit up the middle. Glove by the second baseman, throw to first, and Obed goes down four to three, one away. They swapped uh, Horning and Obed on positions one and three in the order, so coach may have something in mind. And, of course, on the mound today for post-77 is Sean Babineau's having a great Legion season. Wind up and a pitch from McNamara. Is outside and low to Bates, 1-0. and oh. Let's take a look at North Chelmsford. It's James McNamara, the pitcher. His battery mate is May Silverman behind the plate. Andrew Fisher over at first base. John Barry at second base. Ryan Hart, the shortstop. At third base, it's Pete Miller. From left to right, Mike Vecchione. The center fielder is Reed Talbot. And in right field... It is Chad Lazima as that one is hit in the air over to right center. And that is going to drop in front of the right fielder as Bates will keep going over to second base to slide in, and he is safe. Well, what do you think of that one, Larry? You think that was a routine fly ball there, or are you going to give him the base hit? Well, I don't see any sun out there, so I'm going to have to give him an error out there in right field. Yeah, I happen to agree with you there. As Jackson Horning will step into the batter's box. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike one. Of course, this is the last week of the regular season in Zone 5 Legion Baseball. After this, it'll be playoff time. And we'll get some time for May Silverman, the catcher, to talk to his pitcher, James McNamara. Go over the season so far for post 77. A whole lot of W's in the scorebook for Ashland as of late. And we'll recap the, all the action that has occurred so far. Of course, they were plagued by rain a number of times as well, so they had to make some schedule adjustments. They'll have three games in this final week of the regular season. As this is hit up the middle, takes a hop into the second baseman's glove, throw to first, and they Get the out. Bates advances to third. Four to three for Horning. Ben Thomas to the plate with two outs, one on. Both pitchers today were having a little trouble finding the strike zone early on. Both uh, were able to settle down though. Wind up and the pitch. There's a ball to the lefty.
Ashland Post 77, 10 and 5 on the season as there is a strike one and one. Season started back on June 12th on the road, a 10-0 win against Hudson. And then they lost at Natick 11-4. We had that game for you as our first broadcast. As that is hit into left field, that'll drop in for a base hit. It is an RBI single for Ben Thomas. Ronan Bates comes around to score. It is 1-0 post 77. And that'll bring up Zach Pesson, the first baseman. Continuing on with the recap of the post-77 season on June 14th, a 7-6 win at home against Medford. Checking at first, and they thought they had the pickoff, but he is called safe. McNamara started walking towards the bench thinking that he had the out, but Thomas ruled just safe. And then on June 20th, a 1-0 win against Lowell right here at Ashland Middle School. And then a 7-4 loss against Waltham here at Ashland Middle School, and then a few road games for post 77. They beat Lowell 17 to six, as there's a called strike. And then they started a play against Hudson here at Ashland Middle School, but after one inning of play, rain struck and they had to call it a day, as this is up the first base side foul. So they moved the rest of that game to July 13th. And then June 28th, a uh, 3-1 to one loss at North Chelmsford, the team they're playing right now, hoping to get some revenge for that loss. As McNamara is set to deal. And then following that, a 7-0 win against Bill Ricca, as that one is just low. And they fold that up with a 4-3 loss at Sudbury, 6-4 win against Sudbury at home, and then 10 to nothing over Natick, 7 0 over Bill Ricca on July 1st. Checking at first, runner back safe. A 14 2 loss at Newton on July 6th. And then they took a pair on July 8th, 13 1 over Waltham and 11 8 over Medford. Is that pitch up high? Runner thought about taking off, but we'll head back to the bag. And here we are today. They are 10 and 5. And of course, Bill Ricca forfeited the season, so that gave all teams that had them left on their schedule the W in that game. Good battle here between the fifth hitter in the lineup, Zach Pesson and James McNamara. Post 77 already with one run in. Runner will lead off first once again. Pesson asked for time there. Wind up in the pitch. And there's a strike that'll end the inning, but post 77 does play to run. It's one to nothing as we head to the top of the second. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM television. Top of the second inning as North Chelmsford coming back up to the plate. James McNamara, the pitcher, steps in. That one is just low. We're going to have a little hard time with the home plate umpire. He's not too demonstrative with his ball and strike calls. This one is in fair territory on the infield grass. A little flip to first, no problem. One to three goes McNamara. That'll bring up Chad Lazine, the right fielder. Chad Lazine, the six hitter in the lineup. Let's take a look at that North Chelmsford lineup. It's John Barry, the second baseman, who led things off. Pete Miller, the third baseman, batting second. Andrew Fisher, the first baseman, batting third. That one's fouled away. Uh, Ray Silverman, the catcher, is or Max Silverman, excuse me, the catcher, is in the cleanup spot in the lineup. James McNamara, the pitcher, batting fifth. Chad Lazine, the right fielder, batting sixth. As this is hit in the air, liner, and that'll drop into center. That's going to be a base hit for Lazine, a one-out single. And the sixth hitter in the lineup, Chad Lazine, is aboard. Ryan Hart, the seventh hitter in the lineup, playing shortstop, coming up to the plate right now. Reed Talbot Dion, the center fielder, batting eighth. And Mike Vecchione, the left fielder, batting ninth for North Chelmsford. Looks like North Chelms have, has brought their full complement of players, unlike some of the visiting teams that have had just 
just nine to start a game. Very true. North Chelmsford is led by team manager Billy O'Neill and coach Colin Clancy. There's a ball to Hart. We'll take you through the Ashland field in a moment as there's a swinging strike. I think that was Babineau's changeup. Babineau takes a look over at first and will check in and he has the, oh he thought he had the pick off, so did I, but the runner called safe. Didn't the umpire call him out? He did. He did, all right. Second pick for Babineau today who's really elusive. Well, he went back to the bag and was just standing there. I don't think he realized he was out, but that was the right call, certainly. That by a country mile. Oh, absolutely. Sort of blame that one on the first base coach. You saw a kid get picked in the first inning. Cart draws the walk, so with two outs, runner on first. And that will bring up Reed Talbot Dion, the center fielder. Line up in the pitch. Just upstairs. Set to deliver. Leg lift and the pitch. Swinging strike there. Let's take a look at the Ashland Diamond. It's Sean Babineau, the pitcher. Sean Jouette, his battery mate. Behind the plate, Zach Pesson over at first. Ronan Bates at second base. Jackson Horning the shortstop. Louis Rossi at third base. From left to right, it is Jake Obed, Brad Seymour, and Ben Thomas as this one's popped up, and that is going to drop foul. Good hustle by Bates. He did not give up on that ball. Express nothing less from uh, number nine out there. Yeah, and that... Fly ball was, uh, there was a big question mark there as to if it would be fair or foul. The wind just taking a little bit to the right. Foul tip there. Batter thought the catcher had got the foul tip. He was about ready to step towards the dugout. But got the good news from the umpire. Checking at first. Good move by Babineau. Runner was ready for it that time. Kind of has that sidearm pickoff move, which I think throws a lot of hitters off as there is strike three on Talbot Dion, and that'll be the third and final out of the top of the second. To the bottom of the second we go, post 77, leading North Chelmsford one to nothing. Bottom of the second inning, six, seven, and eight due up for post 77. Lewis Rossi, Tom Anzi, and Sean Jouette. Wind up and the pitch. There's a ball, one and oh to Rossi. One run plated in the bottom of the first for Ashland. Swing strike there. Rossi, a gritty kind of player. Doesn't mind getting dirty. One and one count now on the third baseman. There's a strike, one and two. And this is hit in the air, foul out of play. Dylan O'Leary's going to shag that ball. one upstairs. They should get the home plate umpire a mic. He doesn't move his hand up for ball or. First base side, a good dive by the first baseman. The flip to the pitcher and they get him. Nice play by Andrew Fisher. A three to one there. One away and Tomasi to the plate. Line 
up and the pitch to Hansi. 0 oh and 1. There's a swinging strike. The 0 2. Just high. One, two pitch. And that is strike three. Two away. That'll bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. He's gonna make his coach very proud of what he's done all summer. He's He's been terrific behind the plate. And Holliston has a real gem next year for varsity. Absolutely. And as you've mentioned many times, Larry, it's always tough to find a good catcher. As this is hit in the air, a high fly ball over to right center. And it is going to be gloved by the center fielder who got there just in the nick of time as Reed Talbot Dion catches the third and final out of the bottom of the second to the top of the third we go. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM in Hopkinton. Top of the third inning, one to nothing, post 77, leading post 313, North Chelmsford. 9 1 and 2 do up for North Chelmsford. Mike Beccioni, the left fielder, to step in. He takes strike one there, 0 and 1. Babino deals, that one just low. 1 and 1. Set to deliver, check swing, did he hold? No, says the umpire, one and two. I, I don't think the umpire said anything. Well, he signaled that. <laughs> that one's fouled away, count remains one and two. And there's strike three. He thinks he has a run down, but the throw will be in time anyhow. One no, away. No indication from the home plate umpire as to whether that ball was yeah. in the dirt or was it caught clean or what? Didn't look like a rundown situation to me. As John Barry will step in. Seems like uh, it's turning into a pretty good pitcher's duel so far today as there's strike one. Oh, and one. That one fouled away. Oh, and two now to the second baseman who walked in the first inning and was picked off. He was the first pickoff victim for Babineau. That one outside, one and two. Looks like the outfield for Ashland is playing in medium depth. And there's strike three. Would have fooled me. Yeah, not a very <laughs> emotion filled. Maybe he's a rookie umpire. I'd have to lay off him. <laughs> Pete Miller will step in, the third baseman. Babino, four strikeouts so far this evening. Strike one there. Strike two. Oh and two to Miller who singled in the first inning. That one just low. Two and one time called. Who wanted the time, the batter or the catcher? I missed that one. No. I think it was the pitcher. Mm, Jewett thought he had a strike there. Babineau was one step towards the dugout. So there were two in agreement and one was not. The man in blue makes the final decision. 
And this is up the first base side, gloved by Pesson. He has no trouble stepping on the bag for the third and final out of the top of the third to the bottom of the inning we go. Post 77 leading North Chelmsford one to nothing. Bottom of the third inning, 9-1 and 2 do up for post 77. Brad Seymour, the center fielder. Jake Obed, the left fielder. Ronan Bates, the second baseman. So step in and face James McNamara. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike, 0-1. Oh well, pretty good pace to this game so far, moving right along. And what has been a pretty good pitcher's duel, that one fouled away, 0-2. Oh Looks like Dylan O'Leary getting some warm-up action for post-77. Maybe in case Babineau runs into trouble or perhaps for one of the games this week as that one is hit just over the reach of McNamara, but gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. And that is going to be 6-3 for out number one. Jake Obid, the left fielder, to step in. That was a five hop out of the shortstop. I thought he would have beat that out, but it's not what I think, right, Tom? That's right. Pretty good throw, cross by Hart. Obid grounded out his first and only time up this game. Takes ball one there, 1-0. One and, oh. and this should be a pretty busy week for post-77. Three games on the slate in the regular season, then maybe some playoff action. We'll get the lowdown on the potential playoff schedule as the week goes on. That one just upstairs, 1-1. One and one. A little high cheese for uh, Obed. Wind up and the pitch, just low. As far as the standings go, Tom, how far away is the next uh, club behind 77? Uh, I believe it was two games the last I looked. Trying to dig those up now. They've had all kinds of website changes. So it's kind of tough to find the standings nowadays. As that one is outside. No, he called it a strike. Again. This umpire, uh, I think it needs to be a little more clear here with these calls. Especially for the TV crew. Exactly. Fans in dead center field probably just as frustrated as we are. Right. That is hit in the air out of play. Excuse me, I should say the fan in center field. And any call he makes, he's usually facing his right for some reason. There's never, uh, he's never sh showing uh, anyone to his left the call. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike there, and there is a strikeout. Out number two of the inning, Ronan Bates to the plate. A little bit, a little bit frustrated there. I'm not sure whether Babineau's on a pitch count or not today. Well, this game certainly feels as though it will be a pitcher's duel the whole way through. Is that one inside? One and oh. A gorgeous evening for Legion Baseball here on this Monday as this is hit in the air to right field and dropped by the right fielder. And for the second time today, Ronan Bates will reach on an error by the right fielder. So Bates on first, two outs, Jackson Horning to the plate. Again, no sun to be seen. Yep. Can't blame it on the sun there, but that was... Uh, yeah, a little bit of sun, but I don't think enough to really interfere. Two bad angles taken by the right fielder. And speaking of the weather, temperatures in the high 70s. Good pickoff move, almost got him, but Bates just back safely. That's a real, real no-no to get picked off by right-handed pitcher. The coach ought to be helping him out, looking at the pitcher's feet. 
And this is hit in the air to center field and snagged by Talbot Dion for the third and final out of the bottom of the third. It is a one to nothing game as we head to the top of the fourth. Post 77 leading. Top of the fourth inning. Three, four, and five due up for post 313 as Andrew Fisher, the first baseman, steps in. Babineau out there set to deliver. That one low, one and oh. That is fouled away. Did we have a defensive replacement for Thomas? One and one count. Unless you switch uniform numbers with somebody else on the team. One down low, one and two. Up the left side, past the reach of Rossi, and that is going to be a base hit for Fisher. A single. No error there. Nope. Tough ball, tough play to, to make. Pretty impressive, you got the dive on that one. And it even came close to that, that was ripped down the line. As Max Silverman, the catcher, will step in. No outs, one on. So we'll see if Babineau tries to get his third pick off of the day. That would be shame, shame, shame on the first base coach. Line up and the pitch, fouled away. Silverman struck out his only time up this game. Runner leading off of first. Leg lift and the pitch. That is foul. Runner leading off of first. Check in and the runner back safe. Line up and the pitch. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to left center, and it is caught by Seymour. Two away, one away, excuse me. And Fisher back to first. He's proven to be a reliable center fielder this year. Seems to cover a lot of ground. James McNamara, the pitcher, to step in. Babineau is really crafty out the mound. He alters his time and his look over to first base. I think he catches those kids napping. Runner leading off of first. There's a strike. Mm. Oh and one. Set to deliver. Up the middle it goes. Glove by Babineau, throw to second for one. Now to first, double play. A one, four to three, double play. Gets out of the inning, and we will head to the bottom of the fourth. Ashland leading North Chelmsford one to nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning, four, five, and six to a for post 77. Ben Thomas, Zach Pesson, and Lewis Rossi. James McNamara out there for another inning of work. This game cruising right along. A good pitcher's duel between James McNamara and Sean Babineau. Thomas reached on a single in the first inning and drove in the only run of the game. And he will tattoo this ball to left field, but it is going to be caught in left field by Mike Vecchione. A good catch there. Caught it just before it hit the ground. One away, Zach Pest into the plate. I see why I'm confused there. There's two players with number 34 in the back. There's a strike. My bad. I guess that could be a little deceiving. We'll forgive you for that one. All right. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. 0 oh and 2. Let's 
Set to deliver. Swing strike there. He will get a run down. Throw to first in time. Two away. Lewis Rossi to step in. Wind up and the pitch. Ball one. One zero pitch. That one's fouled away. One and one. Tom Ancy on deck. Shall Lewis Rossi reach? Upstairs. Rossi presents a small target at the plate. McNamara gets signed. He likes and deals. Swinging strike. Rossi wasn't happy with that swing. Two and two now. Set to deal. Upstairs, full count. Catcher wasn't happy with that pitch. He reached up and snapped his glove. That one fouled away. The battle continues on. Check swing, won't matter, strike three. And that will wrap up the fourth inning to the top of the fifth we go. It is one to nothing, post 77 on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton. Top of the fifth inning, six, seven, and eight due up for post 313. Chad Luzine, Ryan Hart, and Reed Talbot Dion. Babineau is set to deliver. Swing strike, 0 and 1. That wasn't the heater, that was just something off speed. There's another called strike, 0 and 2. Post 77 got out of the top half of the fourth. A nice double play. Ball scooped up by Babineau. Made a great defensive play on it. That one fouled away. The 0 2, and there is strike number three. One away. Five strikeouts on the evening for Babino. Ryan Hart to step in. Leg lift and the pitch. The bunt pulled back. Take it for a strike. Yep. Babino is. Just dealing today as that one is lined up the middle. That'll drop into center, and that is a base hit. A one-out single for the shortstop. His second time reaching today. Reached on a walk in the second, and now Reed Talbot Dion will come up, but not before head coach Derek Johnson visits the mound. Now Babineau, he's been on a pitch count for his first few starts this season. Is he going to stay in the game? No. Yeah, it looks like he's coming out. Or no, nope, so far just a chat. Yeah, he's going to give up the ball now. And he will be coming out. They are going to save Babineau for the playoffs, which will be happening very soon. We'll be starting up later this week, and we'll have a new pitcher for Ashland post-77. New first baseman. Yeah, we'll have a few defensive changes, and we will take a quick break to get caught up with all the changes and then we will get back to you with what those changes are. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM Television in Hopkinton. New pitcher for post 77. First pitch is up the middle and the flip to second for one throw to first. How about that? A new pitcher and a double play after one pitch to wrap up the 
top of the fifth inning. The new pitcher was Zach Pesson. Ronan Bates moved over to first base. Jack Larsh over to second base. But the defensive changes don't matter for post 77. They're still making it happen defensively on the field. To the bottom of the fifth we go. one nothing. Ashland leading North Chelmsford. All right, bottom of the fifth inning. Seven, eight, and nine do up for post 77. And we have a hitter in the game for Onsi. As the second pitch is a ball, one and one to Jack Larsh, who took over at second base. And he is now hitting in the lineup in the seventh spot. We've got the zone five standings. We'll take you through those in just a moment. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Waltham is at the top, a 10 and five record, but they are tied with Ashland, who is also 10 and five. Swinging strike there. Newton is nine and five. So a half game out. Sudbury eight and five. Wind up and the pitch. And there is strike three on Larsh, one away. That'll bring up the catcher, Sean Jouette. Then you got North Chelmsford, who's very much in the mix at nine and six. Natick is tied with them at nine and six. Lowell is eight and six. And Medford, seven and seven. So zone five still has most of their teams very much alive. One to no to Jouette. Hudson is two and 11. They are pretty much eliminated. And Bill Ricca has forfeited their season, so they are eliminated. Good effort by Bill Recker. <laughs> yeah. They ended up just not having enough players. Pretty unfortunate. That'll happen sometimes. Yeah. Nevertheless, a good effort by Bill Recker. But the majority of District 5 very much alive in the postseason picture as Jouette takes one for the team there. And he will get a pass over to first base, taking that one off the shoulder, it looked like. And that'll bring up Brad Seymour, the center fielder. So this is going to be an interesting week to see how this all plays out. Because there is several teams still in striking distance of the top two, Waltham and Ashland. I hope we're able to cover that H Hudson game there because you owe me some Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Runner leading off of first, wind up and the pitch, upstairs. Ashland needs to scratch out a few more runs here, give themselves some breathing room. He deals. That one is just outside. One and one on Seymour. Runner leading off of first, the throw over. Runner slides back safe. Leading off the bag, he deals. Hit in the air, in the drop. high fly ball, and that'll drop in for a base hit. That is going to be a single for Seymour. Jouette moves up to second, so it's two on, one out. Jake Obid to the plate. Obud has not had uh, any luck with McNamara today so far. He's 0 for 2. Oh, 77. Trying to add some insurance here. Not sure why the first baseman is holding the runner on. That one inside. 1 and 0. Oh. McNamara waits the sign, and he deals. That one upstairs. Do you have any idea why the first baseman is holding the runner on at first? Not quite sure. Maybe a double steal threat? I don't know. <laughs> well, I... Just being cautious. He can't run. A little break for Max Silverman to talk with McNamara. Now, we talked about... Sean Babineau, and he pitched a tremendous four and a third this evening. 
was scoreless four and a third, but ended up coming out of the game. He's been on a pitch count pretty much all season long. And we're told by Coach Johnson he's playing some futures baseball as that one's fouled away. I think he certainly does have a future in baseball. Despite his, despite his diminutive size, he can really get the ball up there. He's got a good repertoire of pitches, and he's got a hell of a pickoff move Certainly that we've does. seen. Yep. And this is up the right side, past the reach of the first baseman. Lead runner being waved around. Jouette going to try to score. The throw in cut off by the catcher. One is in. An RBI single for Obed, who advances the second on the throw in. Seymour is up to third. Duet scores, 2-0 Ashland. Good piece of hitting there by Obed. Ronan Bates will now step in the batter's box. How about the turnaround for post 77 from last season to this season? It's been very, very impressive. Unbelievable, absolutely. And it's a young team this year. But they are right at the top of zone five. Tied for first. That one upstairs. This will be a pretty big inconvenience for North Chelmsford come playoff time if Ashland is able to Put a W in the score books here this evening. Runner leading off of third. That one is just outside. Two and O oh on Bates. Runners on second and third. One out, one in. Infield playing in. They're gonna cut the runner down at the plate. Two nothing lead for Ashland. There's a strike. McNamara working from the stretch, looks at third. He deals, fouled away. Battle continues on. That'll fill up the count on Bates. Time called. Bates is crafty like that. He has a timer in his head, and if he's holding the bat up, which can put some strain on you, he'll call timeout. Line up in the pitch, and he will line this one. That'll drop in a left field. Seymour is in for the third run. Obid behind him, and it is now 4-0 post-77. A two-RBI single for Ronan Bates. A three run bottom of the fifth for Ashland. And there's still only one out. Jackson Horning stepping in the batter's box. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Jackson is sure to be a TVL All Star next year. I bet my life on it. Oh, absolutely. Our slides back safe. Is he won this year? He may have been. But I'm guaranteeing a reperform repeat performance. This is popped up, fair territory, and it's handled by McNamara. Two away. Love those one handed catches. The old timers absolutely despise them. Bates stays at first. Ben Thomas to step in. Big inning for Ashland. Some well needed insurance. Four nothing lead now. As this is up the middle, slow roll to the shortstop. He gloves it, throws to first, and got him just in time for the third and final out of the bottom of the fifth, but not before. Post 77 plates three runs. It's four nothing as we head to the top of the sixth. 
Top of the sixth inning, a 4-0 Ashland Post 77 lead over North Chelmsford. 9-1 and 2 due up for Post 313. Mike Vecchione, the left fielder. John Barry, the second baseman. Pete Miller, the third baseman. Zach Pesson on the mound for another inning of work. Only threw one pitch in the fifth. Ended up being a double play. Leg lift and the pitch. Up the right side, foul. One and one. Two and one now. Set to deal. Up the right side and takes a couple hops. Glove by the second baseman. The throw to first, not a problem. One away. Good work by Pesson covering first base. Any ball hit to the right side, you have to go over. Anything can happen. That'll bring up John Barry. The second baseman, 0 for 1 with a walk. Upstairs it goes. Leg lift and the pitch. That one low, one and one. Excuse me, two and oh. He deals. Three and oh. Three zero pitch. There's strike one. Game is an hour and seven minutes old. Yep, in the uh, top of the six already. Pretty good pace rat here. Up the left side, and that is going to be a fair ball. Around first he goes as Ovid trying to get a handle on it in left field. The throw in, and it is handled by Larsh, it is going to be a one out double for Barry. That will bring up Pete Miller, the third baseman. Pesson from the stretch, runner leading off of second. And this one is hit in the air to the left side in foul territory. Obed makes a nice play on it. And they will confirm the catch for the out. Good play by Obed. Two away. And that will bring up Andrew Fisher. And he really had a run in to get to that ball. He was playing pretty deep out there in left field. Up the right side, foul. That was a real hustle play by Obid. I didn't think he had a chance of getting it. Yeah, especially with how deep he plays, showing off the wheels out there. Runner leading off of second, the 0-1 pitch. And this is lined in a right field. That'll drop in. And the runner will be held up at third. A single for Fisher, Barry to third. Thanks. Coach Johnson is not happy with this third baseman who uh, abandoned third base there on a potential cut play to Bates. Max Silverman, the catcher and cleanup hitter, will now step in. Big opportunity here for post 313. Two on, two outs. Passing from the stretch. Looks at third and deals. Ball one. I'm not sure that Chelms would be in four runs down would put down, put on a play here. Line up and the pitch. Inside. Well, I think with your cleanup hitter out there, you're just going to let him swing away.
Looks at third, the leg lift and the pitch. Inside it goes, called strike. That'd be a tough play for Jewett to pop up and uh, back pick the runner at third, having to go around the right-handed hitter. But he snapped up anyway. The 2-1 pitch. And this is hit in the air to left field. A liner will drop in. One run is in to score. It's an RBI single for the cleanup man, Max Silverman. John Barry comes around. Andrew Fisher is up to second. And that will bring up the pitcher, James McNamara, who will try to help his own cause here. It's now a four to one ball game. Line up and the pitch, fouled away. Well, there's no warm up action for Ashland as of right now. That may change very soon as it looks like someone's picking up the baseball right now and heading over there. That'd be the big tall right handed Dylan O'Leary gonna warm up. That'll be the second time over there today. The 1-1. One, one. Up the left side, past the reach of the shortstop. Lead runner held up at third. It'll be bases loaded with two outs. A single for McNamara. Fisher up to third, Silverman to second. Chad Lazine, the right fielder, to step into the batter's box. North Chumps are playing that very conservatively. I could see another coach sending him. Well, you got the tying run now over at first. And it looks like there was a stoppage. I believe it was by the shortstop. Jackson Horning may have been a little shooken up at some point. He made a hard dive for that ball. It went in the hole. May have knocked the wind out of himself. Strike one to Lazine. Yeah, he had to walk it off for a second, but he's good to go. Leg lift and the pitch. Swinging strike there on the nasty breaking ball. All runners leading off slightly. He deals. That one low. Two and one is the count. Set to deliver. That one inside on the hitter. Good eye there by Lazine. Three and one. Walk here would score a run. Swinging strike, and he gets out of it. Back and back breaking pitches. Yep. And when the fastball wasn't working, he went to the breaking ball, and that will help get him out of a bit of a jam. North Chelmsford does score a run. It is four to one as we head to the bottom of the six. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or H Camp Television in Hopkinton. Bottom of the sixth inning, five, six, and seven do up for Ashland post 77. Zach Feston, Lewis Rossi, and Jack Larsh do up. Now it was a later start between North Chelmsford and Ashland, a 6 p.m. start, and normally daylight would be a factor in this matchup here at Ashland Middle School due to the fact there's no lighting, but since this game has really just flown the whole way as of right now, daylight not a factor, but of course the last two innings have had some events that have dragged on a little bit, but I think they'll be able to get through this one. As Pesson set to step in, started the game as the first baseman, then took over on the mound after Babineau went four and a third. He will line this one right to the shortstop, one away. I don't even think he had a move to catch that one. Lewis Rossi will step in. It was as if that ball was on a line. No pun intended. 
And we are quickly moving through this bottom of the six so far. Four to three there, two away. Now Jack Larsh to step in. North Chelmsford will be down to their final three outs. If they lose, North Chelmsford will fall to nine and seven. Ashton will be 11 and five and in very good position. Line up and the pitch. That one is just low, one and zero. Oh. He deals, swinging strike. Couldn't lay off that pitch, but that's a tough pitch to lay off. One and one. That one low, two and one. Goes from the letters to the knees. It's gonna be a difficult adjustment for Larch. Set to deal. Just inside, three and one. Well, taking a look at the upcoming schedule for post 77 is a swinging strike there. After today, they will play tomorrow once again right here at Ashland Middle School. And then originally, it was going to be a makeup with Hudson right here at Ashland Middle School, but Hudson, they already have another game they have to play on the same day, so Ashland going to do them a favor and head over to Hudson for the final regular season game as Larsh draws the walk, and that will bring up Sean Jouette, the catcher. No warm-up activity for North Chelmsford, so it looks like uh, McNamara is going to go the distance, regardless of what happens here. Pretty good game tomorrow as they will take on Newton. And of course, Newton nine and five right now, a half game behind Ashland. So that is a big one here at Ashland Middle School tomorrow. Was that a called strike? Uh, it looked like, Tom? yes, I believe it was. Mm. Wind up and the pitch. That one is low. Runner will take off from first. The throw up is going to be in time. They got him. So caught stealing is Larsh, and that will wrap up the bottom of the sixth. To the seventh we go. North Chelmsford down to their final three outs with Ashland leading four to one. Top of the seventh inning. North Chelmsford down to their final three outs. And they will rely on their seven, eight, and nine hitters to try to get them back in this game. Ryan Hart to step in. New pitcher on the mound, Dylan O'Leary, the Hopkinton rising senior. All right, Dylan O'Leary with a save opportunity here, coming in for Zach Pesson. Pesson went one and a third. Some pretty solid pitching. Very nervous father out there in center field. Preston gave up four hits and one run in his outing as this is hit over to right field and caught by Thomas, one away. And that'll bring up Reed Talbot Dion, the center fielder. Post 77 is just two outs away from improving to 11 and five. And they were tied at the top Heading into this one, top of zone five as there's a strike. And of course, whether they remain tied will depend on what happened elsewhere as there's another strike, O oh and two. Oh. Dylan throws right over the top and so he's got a nice trajectory keeping the ball low. One, two, fouled away. Waltham also 10 and 5. And it is going to be one fun week of Legion baseball to see what happens as we come to an end on the regular season on Wednesday. That will be the final day of regular season play. Up the left side, that's a fair ball, and it gets by Rossi. 
And that is going to be a reach for Talbot Dion. I'm giving it an error there. That looked pretty routine to me. Yeah, you got to give him an error. It was an in-between hop, but he had enough time to read the ball. Mike Vecchione will come up to the plate. With Chelmsford staying alive. That one is just outside, 1-0. and oh. Dillon pitched one inning for the Hopkins and Hillers today. Or this year, excuse me, not today. So he hasn't uh, worked on his pickoff move much. And the first base runner has got big secondary lead. Followed into the backstop, 2-1. and one. Runner leading off of first, fouled away, two and two. Set to deliver. There's a called strike, out number two. Chumps with hitters, not real happy with that call. Yeah, he did not appear to be. John Barry will step in. The runner at first base doesn't want to make the last out here, so he's getting a little greedy with his lead. Line up and the pitch. That one just low, 1-0. Oh. One out away, checking at first, runner back safe. Let's read Talbot Dion over at first, reach on an error. The only error of the game for post 77. That one outside and a throw down the line by Jouette, runner back safe. Solid throw down the line there. If uh, he were tagged out there, the Chemsford coach would have had his head explode. And as much as Jouette wanted the call on that one, it is called a ball. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to right field, and it is caught by Ben Thomas, and that will wrap this one up. Post 77 grabs the victory, four to one is the final score. A great win here this evening for Ashland. North Chelmsford ends up scoring one run on eight hits committing two errors. Ashland scores four runs on four hits and commits one error. The first run of the game was scored in the bottom of the first after Ronan Bates reached on an error with one out. Ben Thomas drove him in with a single to make it one to nothing. It would stay that way until the bottom of the fifth in which post 77 rallied with one out, Sean Jouette was hit by a pitch. Brad Seymour singled. Jake Obid hit an, hit an RBI single to drive in Jouette. And then Ronan Bates had a two RBI single, which scored both Seymour and Obid. And that would make the score four to nothing, Ashley. And then North Chelmsford responded with one run of their own in the sixth inning. An RBI single by Max Silverman scored John Barry. But despite having the Bases loaded, they were unable to come up with any further runs, and they fall here today to Ashland post 77, four to one. Ashland improves to 11 and five on the season. North Chelmsford falls to nine and seven. The final score for the final time. Ashland post 77 defeats North Chelmsford four to one. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching this broadcast of Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.